Today I'd like to share a video with you guys about how to make a marble solitaire game using VCarve Pro. Uh, this plan comes out of American Woodworker, uh, the April-May 2009 edition. It was submitted by uh, Jim Church. Uh, he shows how to do that with some hand tools. I'm going to show you how to do it with VCarve Pro here. So first thing we're going to want to do is open up VCarve Pro. And then we're going to start a new file. So create a new file over here. And then what we're going to want to do next is set up our job size. The width and height are both going to be 9.5, which are already typed in for me. Thickness of my stock is going to be 3 fourths of an inch, so 0.75. Our XY datum we want to have down the bottom left corner. And then we're going to click OK. So the first thing we're going to do here is draw a circle that's going to represent the game board itself inside of the square. So I'm going to go to draw circle. I'm going to change the diameter here to 9 inches. And then I want to come over to the middle. And I see here that I'm in the middle by having these guidelines appear. I'm going to click once here to create the circle of nine. Once I have my nine inch circle, the next thing I want to do is create a circle that's going to be the trough where the uh, marbles are going to sit once we uh, jump the marbles and actually play the game. So I'm going to change the diameter here from nine inches to eight inches. And I'm going to do the same thing. Go to the center, click one time, and I should have a new circle inside. Once I have that, then I'm going to click close. Now the next part I want to do is draw out where the marbles are actually going to go. To do that, I'm going to start with this draw line slash polyline tool. And with that selected, I'm going to go up to the point where my center line here intersects this inner circle. And I'm going to click one time. I'm going to draw a line all the way down to where that line intersects the inner circle on the bottom side. And I'm going to click. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit Escape. Back over to the Line tool and do the same thing. Now from inside to the left side to the right side making a horizontal line. Okay. And now from here, I'm going to use an offset tool. Apparently, no, I'm not. Okay, let's try this again. Now I'm going to use the offset tool. Sorry about that, folks. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the two lines. For Right now, I'm just going to select the vertical line. And right now, I have outward selected. I change the distance to one inch because that's how far apart the centers of the circles are going to be. Now I'm going to click Offset. And it moves a lot, one line over to the left. I'm going to select that line. Click Offset again. I'm going to select that new line. And click Offset one more time. That gives me now three lines away from my center line. And now I'm going to click the very first center line again. And now change to Inward. I click Offset. Click on the new line. Click Offset again. Click on the new line. Click Offset one final time. Okay. Now if I count these across, I should have seven vertical lines. All right. Then I'm going to click on the center horizontal line. And I'll leave inwards selected because it's already there. I'm going to click Offset. Click the new line. Click Offset. Click the new line and Offset. So now I have three lines going up. Click the middle, click outward, and I'm going to 
do the same thing so I have three lines going down from the center. And once I have this grid here, certain uh, cer uh, certain center points here are going to have circles in them. Okay, what we're going to end up doing is creating like a giant plus inside of here, and we'll start by creating a circle in the center here. So we're going to go back over to the draw circle tool that we used before, but now we're going to change the diameter to 0.5, half an inch. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to click where those two center lines intersect. Once I've clicked once there, I'm going to do kind of like we did with our lines, and I'm going to draw three more circles going in each direction from the center circle. So I have one point in the center, three circles going off in each direction from there. Now from this point, I'm going to end up drawing in five more circles in these corners. So if I start here, because this is where I'm at, I'm going to click once, twice, three times, which is number four, and number five. Okay, and I'll continue to do that the whole way around. my board here and there I have it now to clean this up so I don't have quite so much confusing stuff going on what I can do here is click on a line and then just Use the delete button. Remember, delete and backspace are two different buttons on these uh, Apple computers. Make sure that you're using delete or nothing will happen for you. But here is our cleaned up board. Okay. Now once we get to this point, the next thing we're going to do is come over to this uh, arrow here that's pointing to the right side of the screen and when we click that we're going to get our toolpath uh, commands. First thing I'm going to do is click on this inner circle. Okay, make sure it's the inner circle not the outer circle and I'm going to pick profile toolpath. Once I'm here the starting depth is going to remain the surface of the board, so that's going to be zero. My cutting depth, I want to make sure is 0 0.25, so one fourth of an inch deep. Okay. Here under my tool, I want to select a tool, and I want to look for the V bit 90 degrees, uh, half an inch, 0.5. Okay. If you don't have this tool uh, in your uh, tool list, let me know and I'll show you how to change that. Uh, but just make sure that your settings look like these settings when you have that tool selected. Okay. Then you're going to hit OK. Next, we're going to come down to where it says Machine Vectors. And for this particular cut, we want to be on the line. And then we want to make sure that we have a conventional cut. And then everything else for this one should be left the same, except down here where it has name. And for this one, we'll just call this one a trough. Okay. And we're going to click Calculate. Now the red here is going to show you where the tool is going to travel. Blue is going to show you where it's going to cut. If we hit play, here it will show us what it will look like when it's done. All right. I'll say that finished. We're going to click close. And then I want to come over to this tab that says 2D view. 
that way I can select the next part of our project. Okay. I want to select all of the smaller circles. And then I want to go to drilling tool path. Okay. Starting depth for this one will remain zero. Our cutting depth will again be 0.25, so one fourth of an inch. Our tool should still be the V bit. Okay, 90 degrees, 0.5. And then we can have this set for the retract about the height of the previous pass. And then I would change again the name from drill to uh, marbles. This is where our marbles are going to set, and we're going to hit calculate. Again, here, red lines are showing us where the uh, tool is going to travel. The little blue are almost kind of looks like green on my screen. Points are going to show you where it's going to drill. We hit play. Here's what that will look like. We're going to hit close again. We're going to click on the 2D view again. And now we want to select the outside circle. All right. For this one, we're now going to check the profile tool path. Our cut depth, that's going to change to 0.75 because that's how thick our board is. Okay. Next, we're going to go to our tool. And we're going to take a look for the 0.25 inch end mill. Okay. Again, if you don't have this end mill in your tool list, let me know and I'll help you get that entered. And then just check to make sure that these numbers are the same numbers that you have. All right. Now we're going to click OK. Now when it gets to the machine vectors, here we want to be outside of our line. All right. We need to add tabs to our tool path, or we're going to get some really funky stuff going on with the router. So I'm going to click Add Tabs. The length I have set at 0.5, and the thickness is 0.125, so 1 eighth of an inch. And then I want you to click on Edit Tabs. Once we're here, here it says constant number. I want you to change that to 4. All right. And then you're going to click Add Tabs. Now, right now it's going to add these, at least on mine, in the four um, sides here in the middle, which isn't going to work out very well because our cutter is going to cut into this area, and there's not really going to be anything for these tabs to hold on to. So what I want you to do, if your tabs are where my tabs are, I want you to take your cursor, hover over where it says T right here, signifying the tab. I want you to click and hold and drag that so it's at about a 45 degree angle in line with the corner over here. And do that for all four of these tabs. All right. should look something like that and again it doesn't have to be perfectly 45 degrees if they're a little bit off that's okay but we need to have them in a place where it's actually going to hold on to some material now we can click close and here where it says profile one we're going to change that to cut out okay now we know it's going to cut the board out and we're going to click calculate and again you can see here Lots of blue lines, it's lots of tool paths. Because so we're going to have to make more than one pass to get through the three fourths of an inch. Okay? And you can see here why we want to move the tabs from here because there really wouldn't be anything for them to hold on to. Over here, we actually have some material. Okay? When you get to this point, you can get close here and then come get me, and I will show you how to save these onto the flash drive so we can take these to the CNC router. Now we can start getting some work done, making some sawdust. Congratulations.